last time I spoke with you two weeks ago, I um, delivered a message about redeeming the time wisely. And in it, I gave you a number. That number was 86,400. And so those of you who were here know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, redeeming the time, and that 86,400 represents the seconds that you have in a day. When you use the time that God has given you, whatever you don't use is lost. You cannot reclaim it. It's gone. Um, you can ask for it. It's not coming back. Um, it is done. So in that um, 86,400 seconds that you have, um, you need to redeem it wisely. I decided that I wanted to continue on, on the subject. In fact, I will, probably do, I will probably continue again because I have some other things that I want to say concerning that. But I invite you, first off, to um, open up your Bibles to the book of of Ecclesiastes. We will hear what the wise man had to say concerning the subject. I know that you've all had scriptures that you've read and you've understood, but this one that I've read and I've known for a minimum of 30 years has taken on a brand new meaning for me this week. Um, I thought that I was really understanding this, but I, I oversimplified it. Well, actually, no, I didn't. I made it into something that it wasn't close to what it was saying. I didn't realize how simple what Solomon is saying to us. Now, I'm going to start in the 11th chapter. We're going to spend all of our time tonight in the 11th and, cha 11th and 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes. I think that as I get older, <laughs> the more time means to me. And I realize the wonderful things that you and I can do when we give the time to the Lord or tend to the Lord's things. Beautiful things happen. But when we don't, then not so beautiful things happen. And um, the key chapter that I'm going to spend the majority, the lion's share of my time in is in the 12th chapter. However, we're going to start in the 11th and we're going to take a look at some scriptures um, concerning it. And the title of the lesson tonight is Remember your creator in the days of your youth. While you are young, remember your creator. I've known this scripture, you know, as I've mentioned to you, but the, um, the imagery and um, the simplicity of what Solomon is putting before us, when I looked at it recently, it, it was a wow moment for me because... Um, I got the gist of what he was saying, but he really uses some really clear points to help us understand. But again, I'm going to start reading in, in uh, chapter 11, starting at verse 9. The Bible says, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Okay, so let's consider what he's saying here. He's telling you, okay, when you're young, um, you see things, you have a different uh, viewpoint from someone who's older. In fact, when I come up and down these stairs now, I notice that I hold on to the rail. I don't even think I did that a couple of years ago. I just hop on up here and didn't even think anything of it. But now I hold on to the rail. Um, 
a couple years back, I learned something else about myself, a few things. Number one, when I went to pick Philip up at school one day, I'm just going down the stairs like I normally do, got to the bottom of the stairs and, and fell. And I looked around, who's looking at me down here on the floor? <laughs> and then I got up and I realized what happened was I thought I was at the bottom. I still had another stair to go. So you know what, it also happened to me in my house. Got to the bottom of the stairs at my house one day, uh, coming down the stairs right by Philip's room, found myself laying on the floor. Now, you don't have to do things to me a lot for me to get it. So now, when I go down the stairs, when I get near the bottom, I look down to make sure that I am at the bottom. I don't want to fall again, but it, you know, the reality is, is that it happened. Um, I remember, and it wasn't that long ago, actually it was probably about maybe, let me say about five or six years ago, um, Eugene, my oldest son, Eugene the third, he came by and I had the ladder up at the house. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I always take a look at Mary Ann to make sure that, that way I know because I love Mary Ann. <laughs> the, um, I, I'm, I'm about maybe two runs getting ready to climb up and Gene pulled up. Dad, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to get the leaves out of the gutters. I said, look at the uh, how all of the mulch is wa washing away. I said, because the gutters are full, I said, so it's overrunning and it's causing the, my mulch to run down to the curb. I'll do it, Dad. I said, you don't have to do it. I said, I'll do it. Dad, that's too high. I said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Gene got halfway up there. All of a sudden, he slowed down. And I'm holding the ladder for him. I said, what's wrong? Dad, this is pretty high. I said, so what are you saying? You chicken? He, he started laughing. I told him, I said, if you don't feel comfortable, I said, you don't need to do that. I said, I feel comfortable. I said, now you come down and hold the ladder and let your old dad climb up there. He was stubborn about it. He didn't want to at first, but he came down and he held a ladder and I climbed up and I did the stuff. Now ask me today, will I do that? The answer is N-O with two caps. Period. I'm not going to do that. Um, Gene and I were talking about things. Uh, Gene Baki. There are things that I did that I just I'm just not going to do anymore. I um, I need to have a few things done at my house that I'm very capable of doing. <laughs> um, but because of um, what I would have to do to access some of these things, uh, like well, I'm not I, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I've I'm smarter as I've gotten older, and I don't want to hurt myself. I want to be around here to do as much as God wants me to do, as long as he wants me to do it, and so I'm not going to put myself in a situation. Now, before I continue on, I want to share this with you. I used to think to myself, and I, did, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but this was my thought process. When someone told me that they fell and they hit their head, I would look at them and say, how do you do that? How do you hit your head when you have these hands that will do all of this to prevent you? Well, one day I went to work and decided I wanted to stop in a restaurant and have a breakfast sandwich on the way to work, and there was ice out there, and all I can say is I took a few steps out of my car on that ice, and the next thing I knew, I saw my legs in front of me. And I came down on my back and then my head slammed into the, um, to the ice. And while I was laying there trying to catch my breath, I was thinking, Eugene, to add insult to injury while you're laying here in this parking lot, I said, what if a car pulls in the parking lot and they don't see you laying down there? <laughs> so I got up as fast as I could, but gingerly made my way to the door because I didn't want to fall anymore. So um, I've learned that, you know, that even with the hands, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the hands later because there's a part in this text that really talks about it. 
I've learned with hands and arms that God gave us, you know, that you can be in, in, in a situation where it's not as easy as you might think. I still find myself, if I drop something, I can usually catch it. I don't even have to, you know, if I, if I drop something from here and I see it falling, I can usually put my hand over there and grab it. So I, so I still have some of that little bit, some of that youth left in me, but not as much as what I've had before. And you know what? I'm good with that. But Solomon is saying here that, um, young man, cheer yourself up. You know, do all of these things. But there's something that you need to remember when you're doing it. There's a God in heaven. And, and whatever it is that you choose to do to cheer yourself, you need to make sure that it's not contradicting what God said. So God needs to be the, be the center um, if you're young and you're able to do all kinds of things, I played football, I was on the basketball team, I, I, was, I ran track, I was on the swimming team. Those are in the past. It's not going to happen anymore. But um, I might be, be able to do some of those things as exercise. But Solomon reminds us, and I want to remind you, that if you're younger and you're able to do certain things, still make sure that you know that you need to do what God says to do. And that you need to be centered with what God says. Because again, he says, but know, and I'm in the middle of, at the end of verse 9, but know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Okay? Now he continues on. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart, and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and your youth are vanity. See, so he's reminding us. And the vanity that he's talking about here, he's talking about things under the sun. In this life, there's something greater that you and I have to look forward to. So when he uses the term vanity, he's talking about under the sun. In other words, in this life that you and I live. Um, so what we need to do is we need while we're living our lives and enjoying the things that God has put here for us to enjoy. We need to remember the Lord God and do what he says. Purpose in our mind to obey him. He makes that ever clear as we get to the next chapter, chapter 12. Remember now, <clears throat> excuse me, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember the Lord while you're young. Now, if you're older, remember him now too. But if you're young and you get a good grasp on the things of the Lord, then what you've done is you have a good foundation to stand on and you can, do, you can start doing those things that you know that the Lord said to do and more opportunities come and the Lord blesses you. If I were to ask you, how did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get to the point where they were able to stand up to King Nebuchadnezzar? Because early, we read about Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel making choices. And when they made their choices, they put God at the center of their choice. So God gave them strength when they had to deal with King Nebuchadnezzar. When you and I may put God at the center of our choice, God blesses us. He gives us the blessing of um, helping us. That's how we can remember our creator in the days of our youth. Um, Glenn mentioned a scripture this morning, one that's really, really important to me when he talked about a man who gets married and he should stay home for a year. Now, Glenn mentioned that, um, that uh, people don't do that for, for a number of reasons. But there's another reason why people don't do it. Sometimes they don't know. I didn't know. I, it was ignorance with me. I had no idea that the Bible said that. And, you know, I got married and I was traveling all over the place. Had I known, I, I won't say what I would have done. Had I known what I know now, I would have made that um, important to me because God's word is important to me in everything. So as a young man, Remember your creator? And what did your creator say? If you take a wife, stay at home 
Spend some time to, um, to build that relationship up. Um, get to know your wife. Learn other scriptures that tell us things like um, you guys are to, you, that you're to love your wife the way Christ loves the church. Learn those things. Remember your creator when you're young. Now, here we go. This is what I want to deal with. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days comes. Are difficult days going to come? Absolutely, they are. He's telling you right now, remember, them, remember the Lord before the difficult days come. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Now, I want to talk about that for a second. I don't know how many of you know or, or you've met people. I've met lots of people. Even recently, I've talked to an older man who, um, he's at a point in his life where he's pretty much ready to leave. Um, I'll give you an example of one. Someone that we all know, and I used to, and, and I'm so thankful to God that all the way up until he went home to glory, I got to spend time with him. But Brother Joe Milligan, he got tired. He was at a point where, you know, God's been with him, God's blessed him, and the biggest day of his life, um, Glenn and I got to participate in together. I have never been in the baptistry with three people before, but Glenn and I ba baptized his wife, Frida. Sister, Sister Milligan, right here, together, and I could still see Joe's face. Those were things that made him happy, but as he went, after she passed on, and his body was going the way that old bodies go, he got to a point where he was tired. And even, I think Brother Milligan lived to be like 94, or was it 96? Something like that, in his 94, yeah, 94 years old, and um, had the blessing of being carried by the angels into the Lord, uh, um, to the Lord. But it's, it's telling us that um, when the difficult days come, draw near, when you say, I have no pleasure in them, um, life can be that way. And let's look at the reality of it. It, it, it becomes that way. Uh, for many people. I'm talking to a man right now who recently lost his wife and he's glad that she's not suffering anymore but he's looking at the things that are going on um, in, in our country and he's not happy. Um, he, he's thinking about how things used to be but he's looking at the greed that people have in their hearts and it really bothers him. Um, while the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, we need to remember our Creator in the days of our youth. Now here we go. It's this part that I did never spent a whole bunch of time on until I want to share some things with you now. In the days when the keepers of the house tremble. Well, I mentioned to you a little while ago that when a person falls or they're in the dark, they, they do this. Have you ever considered when you read this verse what the keepers are? If you look at what Solomon is doing here, he has put a man in a house, okay? The man is in his body. The keepers are his arms and hands. And I never thought about that before. And what does he say concerning the, the keepers? The keepers of the house before they, because they tremble. Have you ever seen someone really old doing like this? They just barely with a cup in their hand and their keepers are not really working that well. He said, remember the, your creator before you get to that point. When the keepers of the house tremble. And the strong men 
bow down. I had to think about this. I said, okay, if the arms and, and the hands are keepers, because I've always looked at this literally as the strong men as men. Well, if we're talking about a body, the strong men, what do you think they are? Legs. Your legs are bowed down now. Before you get to a point, I, I saw a man recently, um, uh, because, because he was r really bowed down, and he went into Jewel, and I, and I just watched him how he walked. And, um, and I'm thinking about this, and, I, and all I'm going to say to you is when we're done tonight, just read this again and look at it and think about what we're talking about. So when the strong men bow down, um, when they're bent, when they're not as strong as they were, because the strongest muscles that you have are within your thighs to hold your body upright and so forth. But now the strong men, the strong men are weak. When the grinders cease, every time I read this, I always thought somebody's grinding something or, well, that's not what it's talking about. I finally realized <laughs> you know what this is talking about? Your teeth. It's talking about your teeth. When the grinders cease, because they are few, you only have a few. And um, if you think about it, now that you have just a few teeth, unless you have a whole bunch of money to, um, to get implants, because implants are expensive, very expensive. And even if you have insurance that will pay a portion for your implants, you're still, your out-of-pocket part is still going to be phenomenal. So your other alternative would be to get some false teeth. Well, you're going to need some type of media between your gum and the false teeth to keep those things from falling out of your mouth. But he's saying, before the grinders cease, because they are few. You don't have very many. So they can't grind the food up. So now what you're doing is you're eating soup. So he said, remember, remember your creator when you have all of these good things that you love, when you're able to, uh, to just tear into a big steak and when you're able to eat corn on the cob or other things like that. Um, remember your creator because he's saying there's going to come a time when those things that you have are going to fail. If you remember your creator when you're young, when those things happen in your life, you know what you think about? It's par for the course. And you think things like this. I am getting closer to be with my creator, which is a good thing. Amen? And you're not looking at it in, in a negative aspect. And let, let us continue on. And those that look through the window grow dim. So if you follow everything that we've been talking about, what do you think the windows are? These. And I tell you what, when I look through my windows, I see all kinds of stuff. I see little spots that are there. And the reason for my uh, falling that I was telling you about is because also related to my windows. And uh, because of a condition that I have, I see mice, not literal mice. But if you ever had a mouse in your house, this is what you do, because they're so fast. They'll streak by you real fast, and you'll see them out of the corner of your eyes. And field mice love coming in your house right now, during this time period that you and I are in right now. Um, so the windows, um, before the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets, you know, you um, spend a little bit more time in the house. You're not running out there doing all those things that you used to do. Um, you are a little bit more houseborn now. So he's saying before these things happen, remember your creator. And the sound of grinding is low. So what do you think has happened here? Your ears. You can't hear good anymore. And you know one thing that I really love? I love in the first part of spring, Every year I wait for it. And I tell you what, 
I didn't hear it that well this year, but I bet it happened, and I just caught parts of it because my, I'm sure that my ear, hearing is changing. But I love hearing the birds early in the morning in the spring. But um, he's saying, remember your creator before these things happen. I've never looked at, at this before the way that I've looked at it this week. I've always looked at these figures, um, um, images that he's given us in a different way, but they're straightforward images. Um, when, um, when one rises up at the sound of the birds, well, a lot of older people get up early. <laughs> I've been doing that all my life, though. Um, I've, I've never been able to sleep past 7 o'clock. I'm normally out of the bed every day without a clock around 5. But I noticed something about me now. That 5 has become about 4.30 now. And um, so, so, so again, remember your creator um, before all of these normal things take place because they happen, um, and, and they happen fast. Um, and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of heights. Well, Jean's more afraid of heights than I am, apparently. But um, I have no desire. The next time I have leaves, I'm going to call Brad. Um, just kidding, Brad. He's over there shaking his head, no. <laughs> and I wouldn't do that to you anyway. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to climb up on my roof and do things like that because I recognize the fact of where I am. And it's all good, like they like to say. And the terror in the way when the almond tree blossom. This I had to give some thinking to. I think, I believe, and I need to work on this more, but I think it's talking about the, um, the graying of the hair um, when the almond tree blossomed. Um, so an almond tree has blossomed with me. It's just that the type of haircut that I have, you can't tell that much. But if I were to let my hair grow out on the sides, it's, all, it's pretty much all gray. And it's not that I do that on purpose. It's just that that's how I, it just happened to be like that. But I see the, uh, the top is be beginning to become gray as well. The grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. You know what happens to a grasshopper? You ever see a grasshopper walking? Now they can hop. But when they're not hopping, they kind of drag themselves across the ground is, is what they do. And I think Solomon is telling us, you know, we need to remember our creator before we get to a, that point where we're dragging ours ourselves across the ground and desire fell and men go into his eternal home I don't even have to explain that to you you understand that perfectly clear and the morning goes about the street remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed That one I had to think about, um, but then when you read all the rest of them, he tells you what it is. Years ago, I used to think that this was talking about gray hair. It's not. It's not talking about gray hair at all. This is talking about when our life has ended. We need to remember, because see, at that point, what's going to matter when we stand before the Lord? What mattered when, when, when Mephibosheth was before David? Mephibosheth heard these words when David asked, why are you so kind to me? What am I but a lame dog that you would do this to me? David told him, for Jonathan's sake. What we want to hear is for Jesus' sake because you and I have become children of God. Or the golden bowl is broken. That's what helps you understand it a little bit better. Or the pitcher shattered at the fountain. Or the will is broken at the well. He says, well, if you don't get it by now, then I'll tell you. Here we go, verse 7. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. In other words, when time come for you to die. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. 
all is vanity. And again, the vanity that is as far as earth is concerned, under the earth. All the things that you and I deal with on this planet. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. One of the things that I really, really like is where he's leading to because when we read Solomon saying all of these different things, it almost seems just kind of gloom. Well, well, it, it isn't. Remember what the sermon title is, Remember Your Creator in the Days of Your Youth. Remember God early. Line yourself up with God early in your life. Live trusting in God early so that as you age, He's there with you. And you know that he's there with you. And you know that he's blessing you. And you also know that you're getting closer and closer to the day that you're going to be blessed to be with him. That's how you and I need to think about it. Before the things break that you and I are dealing with in our bodies, because our bodies get old. He told us that because of sin that we would die. And I used to think to myself, because if you say in the day you eat thereof, you're going to die, you're going to just fall over and die. Well, that's not what it is. But he took away from you and I what we need to be sus sustained. And, and he allows us, and he warns us, and he blesses us, and he gives us scripture like this so that we can, at an early age, grab a hold of him and then as we go through a, the journey of the expected things in this life all will be well I stopped in the middle of I'm, I'm going to go back to verse 11 the words of the wise are like golds you know what golds are like little spurs that are on an animal um Remember, the Apostle Paul was told by the Lord, it's hard for you to kick against the gold, against the pricks or the gold. In other words, it's a spur, little thing to keep you straight, going straight down the path. So he's saying the words of the wise are like golds, and the words of, of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. Further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is wearisome to the, to the flesh. Brethren, hear, I'm, I'm sorry, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. <coughs> now what have we been talking about so far? We've been talking about going from youth to being aged to leaving this planet. So he says, okay, now let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter, the whole thing, the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. I tell you what, I like this. I know in the uh, King James, it says, for this is the duty of, ma of, of uh, man. We don't, duty is fine, but we don't even need duty in there. This is man's all, to fear God and to keep his commandments, period. And we need to embrace God early in our life. Uh, we need to know and walk with our, with our creator as early as we possibly can. For this is man's all. Verse 14, I tell you what, I don't know whether you have, but I've experienced verse 14 to where things that I've done in the past at a time when I didn't, where I totally forgot about it, have come back and reminded me of some of my past behavior. 
Verse 14 says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Brethren, when we consider what we're being told by Solomon as he looks at a person going from being young to elderly and then their life ending, we need to remember our creator as early as possible. Line ourselves up with him. Now, I told you I was going to stay in this text and not move from it. I just want to throw a scripture out for you to consider that just kind of complements this. In the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, we're reminded in the first couple of verses that God is not mocked. We need to remember that what God says, he means. And if God means what he says, then you and I need to know that the things that we do, that there are consequences, both good consequences and negative consequences. So if we remember our creator when we're young and obey him, then we're planting good seed and we have a good harvest to look forward to as we age. I commit this lesson to your hearing and I have, do have one more that the next time I speak that I want to talk about related to the same subject. Remember last time, you and I have exactly 86,400 seconds in a day. When you go to bed tonight, it's done. What you didn't do, those other seconds are not going to carry over to tomorrow. When you wake up tomorrow, guess how many seconds you'll have? 86,400. That's right. And what you do with those seconds are up to you. I suggest that you remember your creator while you're young. If you're here tonight and you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells you what to do and the Lord would be happy about it. And even when you obey the Lord and become a child of God, what you do is you validate the death of your Savior and you say, Lord, you didn't die for nothing. Because when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you uh, repent of your sins and you confess him and then you're buried with him in baptism, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and your sins are removed because of Jesus. And if there's anyone here who hasn't done that and who'd like to, you can. And the Bible also tells us to confess our faults one to another and know that he is faithful and just to forgive us all of our sin. So if you're in need of anything at all, then this is your opportunity while we together stand and sing.
Yes. 